Susan Gardner here for Municipal World. We're at the 2019 Federation of Canadian Municipalities Conference in beautiful Quebec City. Joining me in the Municipal World Media Centre this morning is Peter Matard from the County of Kings, Nova Scotia. Welcome. Thank you very much. It's a glad pleasure you, to be here. Oh, so glad that you could join us. Tell us a little bit about uh, County of Kings to kick things off. County of Kings is in the beautiful valley, the Annapolis Valley of Nova Scotia, so between Halifax, midway between Halifax and Yarmouth. So we're an hour from an international airport. Uh, it's mainly agriculturally based in terms of its economy, although it has a Michelin plant, you know, an agricultural uh, energy in the production center, uh, but it's there's been some skipping around. We've lost uh, uh, manufacturers of juice and that type of product. In the meantime, uh, new apple varieties have been introduced. New, we are now the Napa Valley of the East. There's wineries every 15 minutes. So we're enjoying a period of prosperity. Fantastic. Such as municipalities can. Such as municipalities can. So, um, how long how long have you been in, been on council? You're the mayor. I'm you the been, mayor now. I came on council in a by election about six years ago. Right. So we're uh, approaching the end of our mandate. We leave at the same time as our friend uh, Mr. Trump leaves. Okay. Yes. So um, tell us. Uh, I mean, it sounds like Larry's been kind of through a transition in terms of the economy and uh, a few changes. Uh, and, and, you know, challenges probably, but in the end it's been good changes. Tell us a little bit about uh, that and maybe sure. some of the lessons learned for sure. other communities. Well, there have always been challenges. Municipalities, of course, are the lowest uh, political creature on the spectrum, so we are creatures of provincial governments, at least in Canada, not so much in Europe. Uh, so we have less autonomy. Our, uh, I represent a population base of about 45,000 people, but we have within our, our geographic territory three towns, so that bumps it up to about 60,000. What we, uh, our area has never uh, truly suffered from the, the severe downs in the economy because of the agricultural base that we have, yeah. and uh, but nor do we nor do we soar to the heights of the, uh, our friends in the oil business in the West in those good times. So it's, it's pretty steady. We're very fortunate uh, with not only with the beauty of the area that we live in, but with the economy in the area that we live in. But challenges in the municipal world often uh, are created by a lack of understanding of what it is that municipalities as a government do and what it costs to deliver services and how much of those tax dollars collected from the people in your in your area actually go to, toward mandatory expenses like education and uh, security services police and things. core services that core uh, services. the community needs yeah. to uh, carry on sure. that people just expect so uh, my mantra has always been uh, when i came this way was senior levels of government must enable municipal governments to source to find alternate sources of revenue. So we need a we need permission of an enablement from senior governments to allow us to do that. We need to be able to be in the energy production business, wind power, solar power. We need to be able to roll out broadband services across rural municipalities. You'll, it's, it's fine for the ISPs who are in the business of serving concentrated areas, cities, yeah. dense populations. It's, it's, a, it's a good financial model for them. It's not a good financial model for them to, to run a kilometer of wire to catch three users. And that's what makes that last mile so challenging. It does. And um, 
So uh, are you suggesting then that uh, municipalities or the federal government or uh, in partnership uh, need to step in and uh, finish that uh Yes, yeah, so digital access. Governments, senior levels of government need to step up and say, and, and and not say, this is a difficult thing to do. It's not. It's an easy thing to do. All you all you need to do is enable it. So there's uh, there are good incentives right now because of greening of our economy. So the green municipal fund uh, with FCM, the Federation of Canadian Municipalities. There are monies available through them. You can stack some funding with the federal government and those things. Uh, and the same type of thing is now becoming available for broadband. But the, the municipalities in question need to have, in order, for example, to provide that broadband service that is not probably going to be a great revenue producer for municipalities once the capital costs are covered, you need to provide opportunities for alternative revenues from, for example, the delivery of electrical services through green wind power, green energy, uh, to supplement perhaps the additional cost of providing your residents broadband services, which broadband is, is like electricity was, you know, a hundred years ago. It's, it's kind it, of it, essential. It's essential. Yeah. You know, if, if, if you have a child in university and they come home to your place in the country, their place of birth, they need to communicate online. Yes. Home-based businesses now need to be able to communicate online at speeds and and uh, with the redundancy that's required in order to be steady. So do you have uh, uh, any idea in your uh, community, uh, even in the province of Nova Scotia, what that uh, digital divide looks like. What's the gap? Oh, I mean, how many areas are under service? What does it look like? Well, the difficulty is that people like the CRTC, and not, this is not a, a criticism, you know, it's not a slap at yeah. the CRTC or or those folks that are tracking service, the, the model with, that they use in order to track it is flawed. So they'll take a quadrant uh, in, in that's designed in the fashion that they're accustomed to designing it in, and they'll say, because one ISP happens to be within that quadrant, everybody's got good internet services. That's not so. They're underserved. Uh, folks, and there are folks with no service at all within those quadrants. So, I municipalities are on the ground. Yeah. They know yeah. whether or not you're getting service in, yeah. in your rural community. Yeah. We know they're not. Uh, so, you can get funding for coverages, uh, but there are blanked out areas. The areas that are blanked out are the ones that are identified by whomever. Let's pick on the CRTC again. Those areas are blanked out. We can't get in as a municipality. We can't get funding to get in as a municipality because they deem that area to be fully served when it's not. Okay. So we need to have a, um, a real uh, uh, scrutinization of that process. And give, a little, uh, give a little respect and autonomy to the municipalities to advise as to whether these areas are served or underserved. I recommend that those things take place, and, and I can say that in our municipality, of, in the municipality of Kings in Nova Scotia at the present time, we are rolling out broadband into the rural areas. Uh, we have the funding currently to do that, but we will miss 15% or a little more of our citizens because of the problem I just identified to yeah. you. Uh, we are investing in solar energy. Solar energy doesn't provide the return on investment that some other forms of green energy do. And so if, if you're going to provide that type of thing, and if you're going to encourage the greening yeah. of, of the economy, then you have to allow us to get into wind power in, in a major way. And you have to require that the monopolies, the effective monopolies that are carrying power at the present time, allow you on the grid at a price 
you know, that returns a considerable investment back to the municipality. So that investment, the profit from that investment, will help finance rolling out your broadband and will help finance you getting into the green side of the, yeah. the solar industry, yeah. which can also move to vehicular and municipal services and so on. Okay. So municipalities are already making these kinds of investments, but to continue to do so and do so on a scale that uh, makes a significant impact, they really need the support yeah. of the, and, the and province there are some, to, uh, to re yeah. recapture some of these funds. Yeah. And there are some very small municipalities, not well funded, and you have to enable them to get into partnerships with surrounding municipalities yeah. in order to form the co a cohesive group that can go forward on behalf of all of those citizens. Yes. And again, create that alternate source of revenue. Okay. So let us in. That's, okay. what, that's what I'm saying. That's great. Thank you so much for joining us here. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Susan Gardner here from Municipal World with Peter Matard from the County of Kings, Nova Scotia. We share your stories. Mm -hmm.